Hi, I'm Mark, the electronic engineer. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Slayer Exciter and we're going to build a Russian version of it. It's fun, it's sparky, but if you use it wrong, it might kill you. Well, before we get to the juicy stuff, the Russian Slayer Exciter, as I named it, well, I first have to explain the basics. So I'm going to explain to you the circuit of the Slayer Exciter. This is a Slayer Exciter, and basically when you switch it on, um, what will happen is that the LED, the LED here will uh, not be on, it will not light up. But there will be a current going through the resistor into the transistor and back to the battery. This causes the voltage over the LED uh, on the cathode side to be positive and on the anode side to be negative, which means it will not light up. But the transistor will open up and it will start to conduct, causing another main current, the collector current, going through the coil into the transistor and back to the battery. It's actually this collector current that causes an electromagnetic field in this primary coil. Since the secondary coil is winded on top of the primary coil, the electromagnetic field that was generated in the primary coil will affect the secondary coil. And therefore, the secondary coil will generate a voltage and a current will flow from the coil into the parasitic capacitor, which will I explain later, back to ground through the LED into the transistor and back to the coil. The generated voltage in the coil will be negative on the side that is connected to the base of the transistor and positive on the side connected to the top load. Therefore, the voltage on the base of the transistor will be negative in relation to earth and the transistor will close, causing the base current to stop. At this very moment, the LED will light up for a brief moment. Because there is no more base current through the transistor, it will stop conducting and the collector current is no longer present. Without the presence of a collector current, the electromagnetic field in the coil will collapse and the voltage that was generated in the secondary part of the coil will go back to zero. This means we go back to the state we started in and the circle is complete. The circuit, because of this, will start to oscillate. Now let me talk about this parasitic capacitor drawn in green. It's not a physical component on your board, you won't see it anywhere on your circuit board. But it's actually uh, also called an imaginary capacitor. It's there because uh, every circuit, every component has some sort of capacitance towards other components and ground. And although it will be very small, it's still enough to uh, close the circuit because otherwise you would say hey wait a minute this uh, secondary coil is open circuit how can there be any current well this is because of the parasitic capacitor the thing is the the coils form sort of transformer um, in this in this case it's 3 to 100 which means if I would supply 24 volts to the circuit the output of the secondary coil could be theoretically 800 volts. Although it's a very small parasitic capacitor, when you apply 800 volts to even a small capacitor, there will be enough current to close the circuit. Okay, so now that we know how a Slayer Exciter works, what's the purpose? What can we do with it? Well, basically nothing much. We can play around and, you know, light up some fluorescent light bulbs, but that's about it. Alright, show me your maximum power, babe. Okay, so this is a schematic of the Russian Slayer Exciter. It's similar to the Slayer Exciter I just explained, but it has a few minor differences. Well, of course it uses a, a coil, it's the same to the Slayer Exciter. It has a primary winding and a secondary winding. And the secondary winding is coupled directly into the gate of this FET. Um, our previous layer excited used a transistor, but this one uses a FET. And 
Uh, another huge difference is that this one has a thyristor and we can set the threshold of the thyristor. Um, for the voltage coming out of the thyristor will be rectified and sent into a few coils, uh, one or more coils depending on how we put the switches. And those coils are basically um, reused ballast transformers over fluorescent light and the only reason that they're in a the circuit is to uh, boost up the, the the current to charge the capacitor because the energy in the capacitor will be used to fire up our coil. There is however one major setback in the circuit and it has to do with safety. Um, the problem is when you touch the output of the of the coil directly so when you let's say you put you, you put your finger on the output of the coil to play around with the sparks you could directly touch the coil and be indirectly connected to the outlet because the coil is only separated from the outlet through a one and a half K resistor which means there could be a current of 150 milliamps going through your body if you touch that coil and that can kill you for sure so be careful use at your own risk um, I would recommend if you work with the circuit to always use the one hand rule which means when this circuit is on one of your hands is always in your pocket that means you can never touch it with both hands at the same time and the chance of a current going straight through your heart is a lot less this project works with high power and high voltage and some basic knowledge of electricity is required if for example you're a chemist and you have no knowledge of electricity then this project is definitely not for you remember to work safely on the other hand you don't become a lifeguard for open sea if you're just sitting around the swimming pool sometimes you need to dare and take the plunge however if you do take the plunge, make sure you know how to swim. I designed a PCB for this uh, schematic uh, to make it a bit more safe. And I started to assemble. Uh, this circuit board only uses true hole components and it will take you approximately 30 minutes to assemble all. If you want to build your own PCB, you can buy one at my shop, the link I will put down below. The big resistor you see is actually a 70 watt resistor and it can get quite hot. You might choose to use two resistors and put them in series or parallel instead. Okay, the circuit board is done. Let's start winding the secondary coil. This is the result, a secondary coil of approximately 1000 windings. Now let's move on to the primary coil. Now the primary coil is basically no more than a piece of PVC pipe with a diameter of approximately 12 centimeters. And it has four windings of some uh, thicker uh, wire. American wire gauge 14, 
which is approximately in Dutch standard two and a half square millimeters. The windings are two centimeters apart. The windings are not centered. I have done this uh, because it depends on the way you, uh, you build your case. You can either put it this way in or you can put it this way in, whatever is convenient. Now before we can start assembling, let me show you a photo of the, the, the inductive uh, ballast coils that I used. For. Usually they are used for a fluorescent light and we're kind of uh, abusing them to create a large inductive power. At the time that I made this video, I temporarily didn't have access to my workshop. So that's why I left out building a case, but feel free to build your own case uh, for this coil. If you're going to build a case, make sure to include a fan uh, to get some proper airflow uh, to prevent the overheating of the circuit board. 